Welcome to today's CIO Watercooler TV. I'm joined by Steve, the CTO at Metapack. How are you this morning? I am chipper, thank you, sir. Very good. I've just moved house, so I have to say I have envy of the background behind you. Your room is a lot more interesting than mine. Thank you. Thank you. you know, I moved house relatively recently, and before all of this was crammed, it went from you know bookcases to cupboards to a tiny freezing cold room. So it's it's been it's been a decade coming. How many records have you got behind you, roughly, out of interest? Uh, I haven't got that many. I've edited them down over time through. Every time we move house, my wife's saying, you have far too many of these records. So this is a kind of best selection, if you like. So it, fits, it has to fit on the shelf. Has so to you can the see shelf. there's a bit of room for growth. Fair enough. Look, more pressing matters. Uh, CTO of Metapack. Tell us a little bit about Metapack. Sure. We are a tech company. We're in the e-commerce space. Um, it's extremely likely you've had our products in your house multiple times. Uh, probably got probably got something either on its way there or in your house now. We sit between um, the world's biggest retailers um, and the world's biggest carriers. And we provide three things. One is delivery options. So you go onto a, um, a website on Adidas and say, when can I get this at the, web at the checkout? We provide that information based on the carrier uh, information or where a pickup drop-off location is. We provide um, intelligent labels. So if I'm going to send it to your house, we'll dynamically work out the best carrier and the best carrier service to send it to you. We've got about 5,000 services um, based on a bunch of factors in an algorithm. And then we'll do tracking, which will tell uh, both the retailer uh, where, where, where things are, um, how the carrier is getting, do, performing, getting it there, and um, also the consumer. So often our data sits behind quite a lot of things. The nerdy thing to do is to look at labels that come into your house, not from Amazon themselves, but uh, and look for the Metapack logo. You'd be amazed how often it's there. Well, having just moved house, our amount coming through the door has increased even more than we were getting. So I, I will have to do that afterwards. I'm sure I will find it. Uh, and I imagine, look, I'm probably not alone. You, you've, you've, I, I would have imagined, had a very busy year. Yeah, so... Last year, we, as COVID kicked in, we went up to kind of peak levels. The retail industry has this kind of crazy peak volume. We hit that and then just stayed there. Um, then as we went into the kind of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas period, we all sat down and said, okay, let's guess the volumes that we'll hit. Um, and even the ones that uh, we were laughing at and going, don't be ridiculous. Um, no one was anywhere near them. We did much higher. Um, the great news for me um, is uh, the work we've done over the last couple of years to make the business bomb-proof and really, really rock solid in terms of technology meant that pretty much the whole time we're responding at 128 milliseconds. To, to so when, you say, when you say bomb-proof and, and from a technology perspective, what are you specifically talking about there? I'd imagine the systems, the, the boxes, maybe not boxes in the modern world, of course, phys, uh, virtual boxes, but the operational side of the business, right? Yeah, yeah, very much so. So finding out everything, it's about observability. So being obsessed with observability and understanding it. Um, and then being able to constantly find, you have to be a little bit obsessed with making things never go wrong. We talk about boring Mondays. We love a Monday <clears throat> where nothing happens. In fact, now we have um, our daily operations meeting, which is a, a quick Zoom call. It's quite frequently now nothing, nothing much to talk about um, because we've got things uh, to a point where we kill them permanently by investing time and effort, which means our engineering teams can focus all their time on value creation. Um, we're in a full DevOps model. We've got a whole, whole bunch of engineering, amazing engineering teams, very, very talented, and they need to spend their time creating value for our business, which is you solve ops, you get to do that, which is, you know, uh, it's hard yards. When, when I first joined, it was hard yards. Now, the st everybody's aligned. We're very clear on our standards. There's not a dialogue about it. We just know what we need to do. Our customers are seeing it. We regularly get um, nines and tens for NPS. We've swung NPS from a kind of minus 50 to a, a excellent virgin world-class category now in the last two and a half years. So we know our customers notice because if, if our technology stops, their business stops. If you're a ASOS or a Boohoo or you know some or all of these customers use our technology stops their warehouse stops packing 
because there's no labels going on to go out the door. So you mentioned that the volume got to kind of levels that you all thought, no, that's not going to happen, but then it did and it stayed there. How easy is it to form a strategy despite having a bomb-proof operations and, and having that, I suppose that volume rather kind of dictates what you can and can't do, right? I mean, or is that naive? I mean, that, that's with the greatest respect and love, Dave, that's naive. Um, fine. With, 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 with modern tech, if you can, if you get the, if you get the, you get a good understanding of what you're trying to achieve, you build your services at the right size for, in terms of the domain and you construct it intelligently with lots of observability, with automation, um, scale's just numbers. It, it used to be when I first joined the first peak period was a very scary period because everyone was like, there's a lot of tension in the room and it was quite scary. Even though I'd worked in media and print media, particularly for a number of years where there's a 24 hour soap opera and we had seven newspapers. So it was 24, there was seven parallel soap operas every day. Um, but it was still there and we just solved it to the point where it just, they're just numbers. And we just kind of, you know, it's like, yay, we just hit a record. Yay, we just hit a record. And we don't have to think about it. Um, and if it goes wrong, because you're not fatigued or having to deal with it all the time, everyone's like really excited. My heads of engineering and, and me and, you know, all of our talented team leads are like, oh, that's, let's go fix that. So it doesn't, it doesn't prevent you. So volume just becomes numbers. And it's about the learning you get from the numbers. Exactly. So, so what you're basically saying there is to be able to, to put together a coherent strategy in 2021 on the back of the pandemic you need to basically understand and be able to drive insights from your data. And if you haven't got the systems to do that, then that's where you might fall over. Yeah, absolutely. Data is everything. So we ingest, I mean, six to 8,000 tracking events a second permanently. So we've got a very good understanding of what happened when we normalize them. That data starts to give you a really good insight into what's happening, which is one part of it. The second part is then we are um, part in going through a material transformation of our business. We were bought by an amazing owner, stamps.com, who are, um, it, they're, they're like a hidden giant of, of tech. Nobody really knows who they are. And they hit, if you live in America, you hear about them, but they're a pure tech company. Um, they've, they've been investing and we've been working very smartly to get to the business to where it should be, to be the best SaaS business it can be, both for um, you know, the biggest retailers you've ever heard are down to the smallest uh, and do that in a frictionless smart easy way so data plus just simple strategy the great news about our businesses there's a million amazing SaaS businesses in the world um, and we use we use examples and try and be average at everything so a great example we use is our API should be as good as Stripe I don't know if you saw overnight they were valued at 94 billion um, and it's a really simple business what they, the way they present themselves so if you could do your APIs as good as Stripe, you can do um, your UX as clean as, you know, uh, as the best out there. You can have a product lay down that's as simple as a great SaaS company. Suddenly all those things add up to making the company being very easy to do business with, very easy to um, accelerate. And the volume then is an, an opportunity rather than a technology threat. So I suppose my question and the learning would be from that process that you've been through to get it to where it is now, where do you think people should be aware of? Where, where is the potential pitfall that CTOs out there trying to put that kind of an operations so, structure so I think, they should I think be aware of? There's two or three things. One is um, accepting um, you have to have brilliant basics in place and it takes time and effort. And if you don't do it, you don't really get listened to regardless of how exciting or shiny something is. That's where you see the, the CTO and the chief digital officer and the chief product officers all diverging and trying to hire their own teams because the confidence isn't there. Um, also, the, the positioning isn't there. The second thing is to be really, really clear on outcomes that you're, you're looking for and, and be very focused and communicate them relentlessly. Um, and then make sure you start to be able to tell enough of the story so people understand and build confidence. Often, you know, in a lot of businesses, if tech isn't broken, then that's that's the that's okay. You only know you only hear from tech, particularly I would say when it's more IT when it's not broken. So you don't hear from them if it's not broken. So you only hear from them when it's broken. And therefore, try and tell the story in a way that feels respectful to the listener. The fact that you've done your job and something isn't broken is not a reason to to shine. But expressing how the business metrics or the OKRs or the 
are improving because of that. For example, for us, NPS, you know, it's a very straight line between our operations and NPS. If we can service customers well from technology and non-technology means, they're happy, uh, which opens other doors. Look, Steve, it's been fascinating to talk to you. Thanks for your insight around that journey that you've been through. No worries. Take care. Uh, thank you, any, everyone, for tuning in to CIO Watercooler TV. Please do stay. Have a look around the website. There's plenty more episodes for you to browse. Mm-hmm.